Hi guys, it's Boonie. Happy Monday. This week's video is going to be on gaming loss and um, working through that loss. So um, I guess the story that I would kind of parallel with this is, let's say you're playing a game like Minecraft or World of Warcraft or any other game that involves tens to hundreds of hours of gameplay and there's this product or accumulation of things for your character that you're you're building. Um, it's a huge investment. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of dedication to build this character or this world that you've envisioned and to make it real. You know, even though these things are virtual things, the time and commitment that you put into it, those are all tangible. Those are real. Um, some people may not think that virtual things are as important as uh, things you can touch, but to many, many players, it is the closest thing they have to something that's like the most valuable thing to them. And um, when you're in a relationship with someone who plays games so much, you can get into conflicts where there's ultimatums or threats to, you know, destroy the console, delete accounts, or get rid of the game. And um, it's a huge threat. It's a huge threat to offer someone who considers gaming very important part of their life. And so um, this purpose of the video is just to shed perspective on the importance of gaming. I do understand that some people game a lot, way too much, where um, priorities in life are not being met or honored and people are not being um, respected and things are just not working out because of the gaming. And that's a huge part of like self-medicating or avoiding issues. And um, I'll probably address that in future videos. But for this video, I want to talk about how this time and investment to make a character or a world in video games is very, very real. Um, you know, it feeds the reward systems of the brain the same way anything in the real world would. So you're, you're releasing that dopamine. It feels good. You know, it just compels you to create more and you're establishing this connection with people and games. So even though you may not be playing games directly with people, let's say it's a one-on-one -on -one game, you could be in a community or a forum or using it as a tool to connect with others. So I noticed that some kids who play, um, I think it's Clash of Clans on their phone a lot. And then when they're not be able to play as much as their peers, when they go to school, they feel left out and um, not part of the group anymore. And they're kind of their peers make fun of them. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic where if you don't play with them online, you're excluded in real life. And so it's a powerful tool and it's a very overwhelming thing to do to have to play to belong. And it's not the only thing to belong, but it's something to address as a parent. It's also something to be aware of if your child is not sure of why they're getting antsy or um, you know, having some behavior of not being able to play, you know, some exploration can can go about like why is it that important? Maybe they don't know why, but so tell me more about the game. Like, are your friends playing? What do you do at school since you're not allowed to play at school? Do you talk about the game? Like, what happens when you're not allowed to play? Do you feel like your friends are making fun of you for not playing? And so, instead of focusing on the negativity of games. This is actually about belonging to a peer group and working through conflict. And that can be addressed in a conversation, you know, talking to your kid about what do we do? How do we feel about conflict and not belonging? How do we, how do we fix it? How do we repair relationships with our friends? Is it that important to belong when you don't keep up? So that's one thing that I thought of when it comes to taking away games or that feeling of loss it could be connected to belonging or being feeling excluded from your peer group when you're a child. And also for romantic relationships and um, people who have partners who do game a lot, that investment of time is a really big deal. Um, it can mean that, you know, there's an accomplishment that they've put into the game and there's nothing else that can offer that kind of feedback. And it, you know, it makes sense that everyone has their thing. And so 
what do you do when your partner is delving so much into a thing that's not involved in you and your partnership? Um, that's something to bring up. So blaming is a really hard thing to bring up because it makes you defensive instead of talking about the game and attacking the game, you know, there's something missing in the relationship. It's connection, it's validations, it's one-on-one -on -one time to feel like you matter as much too. And how does that go about? Um, it's not easy. Um, having that talk is not easy because feelings are going to get hurt, people get defensive, and, um, you know, it might take many, many breaks to, to pause calm down and then come back because um, something like this that hasn't been brought up before but then it's been an issue for years it's gonna take time so for me when it comes to threatening people to take away games there's always this underlying issue of what's not working in the relationship and what is the thing that game is games are providing for someone um, you know, I, I've also talked to other clinicians where they take games away completely. And this is for parenting of teenagers and children. Um, I understand their perspective, too. They think that, you know, if you take games away completely, the kids will do whatever it takes to earn the games back. And so for me, that's a great behavioral approach. It gives parents ownership and empowers them to do what they need to do to, to shape their child to have, you know, coping strategies, responsibility, time management. It's very big, you know, these early years are so important that it's important to, to honor your child and what their interests are, but also shape them with what they need to survive as an adult and later in life. So um, there's multiple ways to go about it. There's just random things that I've been thinking of this past week when it comes to loss and threatening to take a game away. So. Um, if possible, uh, talk about it. Um, you know, I think cold turkey is really harsh uh, punishment for people, but I think it depends on the severity, right? It depends if you're playing so much that you're not even going to the bathroom, you're, you're playing so much that you're neglecting everyone in your life and you're withdrawing. And what I've mentioned before, that withdrawing is sometimes necessary in life, but having people who care step in and say, hey, this isn't working, Let's figure out something else that we can do with our time together. You know, that's a nice approach. Maybe that will work, you know, but taking time to consult with people and then stepping back to observe if this is really a problem, if I'm having my needs met or not, you know, those are all important topics to address and, and introspect on. Like what is about the games that is making it so difficult to accept? What is it about? the person who's gaming and me that I'm getting so riled up about it and like what is it about the loss for the person that I can do to help because loss is a process grieving is a process it, it, it will take time to cope if so if you're some if you're a person who has a gamer in your life and you're really thinking about cold turkey and taking stuff away um Working through loss and, and, and showing care and love through this process is also very important. Um, it's important to feel loved so that when the thing is taken away, there's no resentment, you know? So those are just some of my thoughts this week. I'm probably going to make another video soon about extended thoughts on this. So take care, guys.